So I'm uh, I want to show off a program that I've been working on for automating blank slates from or not blank slates all the slates from Blood Magic. There's five of them. I'm using RF Tools Control to do it, and uh, here's my Well of Suffering, and I got a spawner in there. Now I've been trying to think of the best way to show to show this or to explain it, but I might as well just show what it does first. These are the items. It doesn't matter where the items are. It just matters that they're in here. They could be not stacked. Slots don't matter. None of that. They're just in that chest. If I push start, it's going to do a read. It initializes. There's a reason I do this. It's not efficient, but I do do it. Initialize everything to zero. Um, so yeah, this is my count. Now I have it programmed specifically to want 64, 32, 16, 8 and 4. If it has less than those numbers, it will say, hey, you do not have enough, and it will start crafting items. But in this case, it didn't need to. It's full. It's happy. If I push start again, I want to show this part. After it crafts everything, or no, at first it's going to say, hey, I don't need to craft anything, it's going to charge an orb. And if you know anything about blood magic, you know you need to charge these orbs to keep your essence full because this well of suffering uses essence so the last thing the program does is it charges us for a bit and the, now there's no good way to check the status of that blood orb because you can't check metadata or nbt data because it's tied to the player file not the not the orb so i just have it on a timer i don't like it but that's the best way i can think of doing that right now so let's show what happens if we are missing a third tier imbued slate. So we run the program and it's saying calling slate 3 it does not have 16 so it sticks slate 2 in which is this reinforced one and it crafts a slate 3. Now what happens is it's gonna say hey we just used the slate Two. So now it's going to take a slate one to make a slate two to refinish its its uh, supplies. And now it's going to craft a uh, slate one again with living rock. And you might be asking, why is it living rock from Batania? It's because this is a modified mod pack. And again, the last thing it does is it charges that orb again. So, um. Is it done? Come on, be done. Store the orb. So it's done, everything's happy, the program's just sitting idle. Uh, real quick, the inventory program, there's the calling program, and there's the control program. Uh, what's the best way to do this? The resource allocation. So for the inventory program, I'm using all seven variables. Or no, I'm using seven variables of the eight. Variable zero is a progress thing. It shows you this part, the stored orb. That's what variable zero is. Variable one to five is my actual count of slates. I've got this many slate ones, twos, all the way to fives. Variable six is a variable for the done bit. It's like the final Boolean flag, true or false. Is program completely done running? That's what this is. What's interesting to note is program one, these are the variables, it's not using any item slots. If I go to program three, which is the control program, it's using variable zero for displaying text for progress status, but it's also using variable one down here for the done bit, where this program's calling it variable six, this program's calling it variable one. I could enable these so it would be, you know, variable six, but I didn't and it just complicates things because you do have to call it by the right variable. In this program it's one, in this program it's six, even though they're being they're the same thing, they're just called different. I probably did a bad job of explaining that, but oh well. Um, program three uses uh, slots zero, one, and two. This slot is for the blood orb. That's all that happens. It gets pushed out of slot zero to the blood altar and it gets pulled back in and stuck here. It never leaves. Program or uh, slot one is the going into the altar 
and then slot two is coming out of the altar. So from this iron chest over here, it will push through to the altar and it'll retrieve from the altar. And I don't want items to sit here because if anything sits here, it'll just jam up and plug. So this program, the calling program, it uses the status variable and then it also uses the same item slots over here. Now, I don't know too much about all this processor stuff from RF tools, control, this does things. Um, I don't know what processor you need. I made the biggest one. I made the best advanced network card. I made a RAM chip, which gives you these. If you take it out, you got no variables. And the graphics card's not needed. It's, uh, I was playing with graphics, but you don't need it for this program. These are not graphics here. I mean, they are, but they're not. This graphics card has nothing to do with these. These are set by screen modules. You will link these cards to this processor, and then you can stick them in this screen, and you can say, call a signal. So the start button will call start sequence. It will call the abort, which doesn't do anything because I haven't made it do anything. And then here's my status, variable 0, my slate 1, variable 1, all the way to slate 5, variable 5, and the done bit, which is variable 6. So, what now? Oh, there is um, three nodes that are important for my blood magic network, which is how this processor talks over the advanced network to the, the nodes is over the blood magic channel, which can be named anything. I named it that. Uh, nodes. This one's slates. I have one in here called mobs, and it basically controls the spawner and then the, uh, the altar. Redstone signal disables this thing. And then the third node is altar. It um, gets a level from the blood altar. Is it full? Is it almost full? Is it low? Yada yada yada. Like right now 12, a redstone signal of 12 is saying you are completely full. And the other thing this altar does is it it's actually what interacts with putting items into the altar and pulling items out of the altar. That's what that guy does. So he's he's pretty important. So yeah, that's, that's the program. Um, I don't know how long this video has been, but uh, I don't know if I should try to explain what the code does. Probably not, because it's confusing to look at. Maybe I'll try. When you push the start button, it calls BM control, but it also calls BM inventory. And I think BM inventory runs first because it's the first program card in the processor. So when you push the start button, it goes to this event signal. Now I'm not going to talk about all these op codes, obviously. I'll just kind of a quick run through. Um, the start sequence runs. It will enable the mob, so it's going to turn off the redstone signal to the uh, mob spawner and the ritual of the Well of Suffering, so they're active. And then it's going to initialize my variables to zero. That's why every time you push the start button, all the variables go zero. The reason I did that is just because I wanted to learn how to use this loop function and uh, there's really no reason to do that. I just do it because I'm trying to learn the mod. These are comments. I added them to, to say things. They don't have a purpose other than you can hover over them and read them. So start buttons pushed. Initialize. Start the mobs and initialize the variables. So after that part runs, it stops the program. But it's also concurrently calling this signal, which is, again, the start sequence. What it'll do is it'll display some messages, but it's going to basically check the redstone. Is the redstone level, I'm saying that wrong, it's going to check the blood level in the altar using a redstone signal that I talked about earlier over there. If it's greater than 12, if it's locked, um, I don't know if I should explain this, there's locks in this program that do things. They're like checks, and then there's also other tests, but I've got a low blood check. Um, this is kind of complicated. I don't know if I should explain this. 
let's talk about the point of this bm control it's checking constantly the level in the blood altar if the blood altar is too low it will not allow you to go to the inventory program to start crafting necessary slates it will keep running in a loop until the blood altar is full if the blood altar gets too low it will actually lock and it'll pull all the items out and it'll keep circling until it's recharged and it won't break out of that lock until it gets all the way back up to 12. so if you get a redstone signal of three it'll lock down and you can't use it until it recharges fortunately it recharges pretty fast but regardless you can't use it so what happens is if it's below 12 but it still hasn't got to below three like it's going from 12 to 10 to 11 it's going to allow you to take this path and keep calling for crafts until it gets to three and once it hits three it locks and you will not be able to use it until it gets all the way back up to 12 and then it unlocks I'm sure that's not very uh, clear, but let's say the blood level's good. Go to the inventory program. So back to the inventory program. We covered the initialization up here. Let's scroll down. So here is the inventory program. What it does is it goes and it looks at the slates. Slates one, two, three, four, and five, which is the ethereal slate. It gets the count that's in the chest and it stores it in a variable. And there's another check that happens here. If the program's currently doing something, like it's locked, it will go back to the control program and just keep running and doing a, a check on the level, the, the, the blood level. If it's currently crafting because we don't want to start jamming items in the altar otherwise it plugs and back up so if you're doing if you're doing a task if you're making a slate don't make more just keep waiting once it's unlocked and it's actually able to do a check it'll say hey is variable one which is slate one higher than 64 is slate two higher than 32 slate 3 16 all the way to 4 and 5 so what happens is if everything is good the program will unlock the altar it will set the done bit and it'll go back to the control program so back to the control program everything's good all of our slates are where they should be when it does this last check it'll come through this logic but instead of going to the inventory program it'll say hey is the done bit set if the done bit set then it will say hey charge the orb and it sticks the orb in the altar for 300 ticks just to kind of get it charged up a bit i'm not happy with this part but that's just gonna have to be how it is for right now until i think of a better way so yeah charge the blood orb after it's done it will uh turn off the mob spawner and turn off the uh the well of suffering so it's not wasting my my essence points and then it will pull the orb back out of the altar and stick it in the processor and then it stops the program so the program ends with the blood orb stored everything's full and happy everything's shut down so that's great so now what happens if we call for an inventory check and one of these is too low one of these five slates is too low it will go to the appropriate call which is slate three slate two etc and it goes to this program this is the nice program everything's duplicated it's slate one two three all the way to four five and it perfectly fits in here which i'm happy about but anyways slate one if we're low on slate one it calls and it says you know hey we're calling there it puts a living rock which is a Batania item because this is again a uh, modified uh, mod pack uh, living rock it stuffs it in to the blood altar and now what happens once it's in there it's gonna go in this loop and it's gonna keep checking hey is this living rock Oops. is this living rock has it turned into a blank slate which is slate one and if it hasn't it will keep checking 
But if it has, it pulls the item out and then it goes down this wire connection and then it says, okay, unlock the altar, we are done crafting and uh, call the control again. And again, the control will check the blood level and if the blood level is good, it'll call the inventory program and it does a complete loop. What's interesting though, is if we're crafting an item and let's say we run out of blood, it gets too low. This part's happening, I think, concurrently as to when this thing's happening. So this thing can detect a low level of blood and then unload the items and pull all the items out, I believe. Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know now that I think about it. Maybe I'm completely wrong and that's a bunch of bullshit. That's probably why I put uh, redstone level of three, even though the blood altar is pretty full and can do some missions, I guess I don't want to let it get too low. So maybe, hmm, now I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. So yeah, this creates all the different slates. I kind of lost my train of thought there. So yeah, it's pretty neat. So now I can just walk up to this thing. I can just pull out all the items. I can just hit the start button and walk away and go do my crafts. It starts the starts the machine up. We're saying, hey, call slate five. We don't have any. And if you remember correctly, we are looking for four items. And so what it's going to do is craft one. So that one just finished. So now it's made one, but we've only got 35 now. And what's neat is it can craft another one because this is above 32.